Thank you for visiting the YouTube channel for bestbiblecommentaries.com. In this video, I'm going to show you Revelation by Bust Fanning in the Zondervan Exegetical Commentary on the New Testament series. Before I do that, I invite you to subscribe to this channel. Also, I'd appreciate it if you click the thumbs up button on my videos as that helps me out on YouTube. Also, comment down below. Have you used any of the ZECNT volumes? Uh, which ones and which one did you like? Um, I imagine not a lot of people still have this one. It's less than a year old, but if you have used it, go ahead and um, let me know what you think of it. Also, if you've seen comment sections in other of my videos, you know that people just ask me all sorts of questions in the comment section, and that's t perfectly fine too. Um, however I can be helpful um, is, is wonderful. Also, before I dive into that volume, I wanted to let you know that in the last few weeks I have got some new releases. I'm not yet prepared to make an entire video on them, but I'm just going to show you those new releases at the end of this video. So you can kind of see what's coming out, what's brand new, what's hot off the press, uh, that kind of thing. So I'm going to show you some different volumes at the end of this video. So stick around. Okay. Bruce Fanning has taught at Dallas Theological Seminary for over 40 years. His expertise is actually in Greek. That's what he teaches at Dallas. And um, I believe that this is his first commentary that he has published. However, I know that he's working on others of them because when this came out, I think it was last spring, in spring 2020, um, Dr. Fanning was nice enough to do a question and answer with me on my website. And I'll put a link to that in the description box down below. And at the end of that Q&A, he mentioned some other commentaries he's working on in some well-known commentary series. So if this is the first, it's, it's not going to be the last. Uh, also, I'll put a link down below to, to just uh, a link to Amazon so you can have that as well. Um, I'm going to compare it to this Grant Osborne, do a little bit of comparison uh, with this Grant Osborne volume on Revelation. That's why I'm showing it here in just a moment. Let me say something more about the ZECNT series, though. In, in my opinion, this is pro it probably has this series probably has the most friendly layout of any commentary series. Now, most of us aren't going to pick a commentary based on the layout. We're going to pick it on the content. But layout's helpful. Layout's helpful. Ask anybody who's used the word biblical commentary series before. Uh, that's a joke. But anyway, so we have the uh, literary... So we have every section of scripture is divided into seven separate sections. And so it just makes it really easy to find what you're looking for in the ZECNT series. There is Greek in it, but you don't need to know Greek to maximize the series. So for instance, the English text is printed in bold. Then right beneath it is the Greek and then the explanation uh, in English, of course. Um, but there, there are, like I said, there are seven sections to each passage of Scripture. One is the explanation of the text. One is the outline. One is the application of the text. One is the theology of the text. And there's a few other ones. So um, if you know Greek, you might spend more time in one particular section. But if you don't know Greek, at least six out of the seven sections for every passage are still going to be relevant. And even then, you can look at the, the uh, exegetical outline and still and still get nuggets of information out of it. So that's why I call it a mid-level commentary. Uh, Fanning is conservative. He is evangelical. He makes a point in the preface of saying that he avoids just as by his, his hermeneutic is that um, his approach to hermeneutics is he avoids critical interpretations of scripture. And he goes into why. I'm not going to go into all of that right now. Uh, a couple of foundational issues is that he thinks that an apostle, um, a disciple of John the Apostle wrote Revelation, so not John himself. Um, he thinks that it was written in the reign of Domitian, mid-90s, around there. And as far as the millennial kingdom goes in Revelation chapter 20, um, he is premillennial, which I'll say more about in just a moment. Um, he is premillennial, and in Revelation chapter 20, he will argue against Beale's commentary. And I mention that because if you're watching this channel, you might know that Beale is considered, um, Beale's Revelation commentary is considered by most to be the best. And it's a non-millennial approach to the book of Revelation, uh, to, the, um, to Revelation chapter 20. So Fanning interacts with him in um, chapter 20, or um, in his comments on Revelation chapter 20. 
So I think, so it's too early for academic reviews on this volume just because it's too new in academic journals sometimes. Some come out once a quarter, some come out twice a year, some come out once a year. So it just, it takes a while to, to pile up the academic reviews on a volume. So those aren't available for this volume yet. In my opinion, in my humble opinion, I think this volume is going to be compared to Grant Osborne's volume. Um, so a lot of people would put Grant Osborne's Revelation commentary just behind Beale's. It's usually a lot of people have Beale first and then Grant Osborne and Mounts and maybe a few others kind of two, two through five for just, you know, just whatever that's worth. In a way, you could say that is this the best reviewed Revelation commentary from a premillennial perspective. I think you could say that because Beale is is a millennial. So that's why I think this exegetical mid-level commentary on Revelation is going to be compared to this exegetical mid-level commentary on Revelation, and they're both premillennial. So I'll put a link down below also to uh, my page on best Revelation commentaries if you want to do a little bit more of that comparison. Um, this this I have this on the page. It's just. Um, it's just, it's a new release. So it's just, uh, um, it's not in the top 10, but just, it's just a new release. And that list is just for a starting place anyway. It's not the final word. It's not the final word. It's just a word is as, it, as I like to say. Okay. So let's talk about one difference though, between this volumes, and then I'll get to those new releases that I was talking about. Um, Revelation 3, 10. Um, Jesus is speaking to the church at Philadelphia, and he says, I will keep you from the hour of testing that is destined to come upon the whole world. Now, in that particular verse, um, even premillennialists will find, will not, there won't be agreement even among premillennialists. So, in other words, what the authors say about Revelation 20 is is pretty similar. Um, other key passages to the premillennial perspective, Revelation 13, the beast, uh, Revelation chapters 6 through 19, which the position ter interprets as the, the tribulation period. So those are, there's going to be a lot of overlap here. But Revelation 3.10, I found one that where, where there was a difference. So again, Jesus says to the church at Philadelphia, I will keep you from the hour of testing that is destined to come upon the whole world. So even among premillennialists, there is a question of whether, um, what does that period of testing refer to and why the clause that is destined to come upon the whole world. How do we understand whole world? Jesus is speaking to the church at Philadelphia, yet he talks about this hour of testing that is destined to come upon the whole world. So you can see how there might be some different opinions on that. So what do these two authors think? So Fanning thinks that um, the verse is talking about the rapture. So he discusses the different perspectives and then concludes that the information, um, the, the, the exegesis that he walks the reader through leads to the conclusion in his view that the, it, the verse is talking about the rapture, the rapture being that event, that end times event where Christians are supernaturally removed from the world um, and so then they will not participate in the seven-year tribulation. And so he says, this suggests that in Revelation 3.10, Christ promises to, quote-unquote, keep the Christians in Philadelphia from the future period of severe worldwide trial by taking them away from the earthly scene entirely. Then he quotes a sixth century, um, six, that'd be sixth, S-I-X-T-H, <laughs> sixth century uh, commentator who suspected something similar, that there was going to be some worldwide deliverance, uh, or there's going to be a deliverance from a worldwide trial, Andrew of Caesarea. So th I thought that was kind of interesting. I don't recall reading much about that uh, historical reference in uh, Revelation commentaries before, but uh, that was interesting. So um, Fanning goes on to say, this coheres exactly with Paul's description of a quote-unquote rapture of Christians that catches them up from the earth to be with Christ forever as one facet of the Lord's coming at the end of the age. This will be done in connection with delivering Christians from God's wrath that will be visited on the ungodly in the judgments of the day of the Lord. In Revelation, these judgments are portrayed in chapters 6 through 19. So that that is consistent with a uh, premillennial understanding of the book of Revelation. So, um, and, and he goes on, but in other words, he's interpreting that the the verse and the clause being rescued from 
the testing that's going to come upon the, the whole world as a reference to Christians will be raptured and escape the worldwide tribulation period. Grant Osborne has a different take on those verses. And he talks about in his commentary, he gets, he gets um, into the Greek and he talks about how um, does the Greek teach that believers will be, tech, be protected from the trial or be removed from the trial. So his discussion centers around is, is Jesus saying to the church that, that uh, Christians will be saved through persecution, meaning they, through tribulation, meaning they will go through that period of tribulation, or will they be saved from that tribulation, meaning they don't have to experience it at all. So uh, Osborne says, Osborne's conclusion is that Christians will be saved uh, through it, and and not necessarily the tribulation. He thinks it's it's referring to other kinds of trials. So he doesn't even see, he doesn't see the rapture in this verse, but his his um, interpretation is that Christians will be saved through it, meaning God will help them to persevere through whatever testing this is referring to. Um, so he doesn't understand it in light of the rapture. He says, in light of this view, the view that seems sees this as protection rather than exemption from the trial is more likely. This is in keeping in the emphasis of the rest of the book, especially in connection with the seals, trumpets, and bowls. Um, he goes on, and I'll just wrap up here. Therefore, the point is that the Philadelphia church, identified with all faithful believers here, will be protected from the wrath of God against the unbelievers, but not from the wrath of Satan, and that this protection is within and not a removal from, again, that this protection is within and not a removal from, as in pre-tribulation rapture, that wrath. So there is some difference. I think a lot of um, people who hold the premillennial position will, they might just want both of these on their shelf, maybe along with Robert Thomas. Um, I think uh, those are going to be the top uh, premillennial commentaries on the book of Revelation. There's some others too, Alan Johnson's in the Expositor series. There's a few others. I just, you can look at that page, uh, Best Revelation Commentaries, for more information on the different viewpoints that Revelation commentators have. So I hope that was helpful to you in understanding more about this volume and these as well. Now let me show you some of the new releases that I promised. So again, I just don't have enough information yet to make videos on each of these, but um, but I will in the future. So the first two actually. Okay. The first two. So this is the reboot um, of the Biblical Theology for Christian Proclamation series. There's only like four or five volumes out in that series. And then it was discontinued. Um, but Lexham has picked it up. Lexham Academic has picked it up, and a lot of people are glad that they picked it up, and they're beginning to reprint the volumes. And so, um, actually, they're reprinting existing volumes, rebranding them. Um, as you can see, these are different cover designs, and um, and they're going to be coming out with new volumes, I understand, as well. So this is Thomas Schreiner, Hebrews, and um, Pastoral Epistles by Andreas Kostenberger. I think both of these commentaries are going to be well-received. And um, I, I just, I literally opened these boxes just a few minutes ago, so I'm kind of looking at these for the first time as well. But it looks like a very similar layout to what was in the, um, the previous series. So I know that a lot of people are happy that Lexham's picking up this series and look forward to um, more releases in the Lexham Academic. Uh, so, and it is called Evangelical Biblical Theology Commentary, EBTC. All right, next new release. Oh, this is a big one. Oh, Wayne Grudem, one of the most popular systematic theology books of the last few decades, now has a second edition. Over 750,000 copies sold. So I literally just opened this... Um, a few minutes ago as well. So I'm not that familiar with it, but I'll come out on, with a video on it sometime soon. 
I have heard about this volume. I heard it was in the works. Looks a little bigger than the previous volume. And I, I saw a list of about a dozen different topics that he tackles in this second edition that wasn't in the first edition. So I'll just, I'll incorporate it into the video um, when I make it. I, I just flipped through it just a, for about 30 seconds before I um, turned on this video and I saw an entire section on Mormonism in the section on the Trinity. And I had not recalled that in the previous volume. So, um, so anyway, I, I will, I will talk about what's new in it, what's the same and, um, look forward to, to that. I know a lot of people have this, have this book on their shelf. So now in a second, second edition, um, this came out, I think it came out in January. So I think it came out a month ago, but I know that they sold out almost immediately. Um, Zondervan almost sold out almost immediately, so I had to wait a little longer. But I got it. Okay. This might not look familiar to you, but some might be familiar with the Evangelical Exegetical Commentary, also by Lexham Academic. So, Lexham doing a great job with biblical studies resources. Um, this is this is a different cover design. So there are some evangelical exegetical commentaries already out there. For some reason, S.M. Baas is coming to mind. S.M. Ba on, a, on Ephesians is like a brown, mostly brown with some orange um, orange design in the cover. S.M. Ba on Ephesians. Um, Gary Derrickson on the letters of John. Um there are others. I'm just having, sorry, I'm just having a hard time remembering all of the ones in the series. But this, so this is a, yeah, this is, it looks like a, a just a new cover design. So this is J. Paul Tanner, Daniel, in the Evangelical Exegetical Commentary Series. Um, very high quality book. It's got a blurb by Daryl Bach of Dallas Theological Seminary. That never hurts. And, um, this is the first time I'm flipping through this here. So you're seeing it as I'm seeing it. Um, the quality is, is just excellent. So Lexum, well done. Well done with the new commentaries, Lexum. Also, thank you for sending them to me. Look forward to getting familiar with them. So, uh, so that's it for now. Um, thank you for watching this video on Revelation and on all these different commentaries. And... I appreciate your, your watching. Thank you for subscribing to my channel and watching it. And um, hope it's been helpful. Leave some comments down below. Let me know what you think.